<laughs> well, it is tough enough finding your perfect partner, and more and more people are turning to the professionals to do the hard work for them. Uh, Rena. Yes. That's what that's your job. It is. You, we should it's call indeed. you Cupid today. <laughs> Please feel free. Any any day of the year if call me Cupid. Yeah. But I think a lot of people tonight, a lot of singles people, they're organising singles nights tonight. It's yeah. a little bit disturbing. Like, to be honest, I, I really think that just leave it be. Stay in, get together with the girls, have, watch a Ryan Gosling movie, you know, <laughs> bury your head in a Chinese or a uh, tub <laughs> or of Ben and Jerry's. You can't go out and out, out romance people on Valentine's night. It's going to restaurants pubs are just going to be chock full of people trying to out romance each other the pdas will be sickening and you'll eventually just throw in the towel after an hour and just get depressed and want to go home i have it in good authority that valentine's is a very good time for men male friends of mine that there's yeah. groups of single women all mooning around the place yeah. half you know what and desperate and they're, they're like spearing fish in a barrel well to be honest women are <laughs> very, you know <laughs> crude about it but there you go you know, guys are equally as desperate as women. I mm. mean, you know, that survey that um, I think Ryanair did, yeah. and they were talking about 78% or 76% of men wanting sex and 0% of women wanting sex. I don't know what who they were surveying because that's just not true. Women appreciate and want sex just as much, much as men do. Yeah. Men want equally to get married equally as much as women really? do. They're just afraid to admit it. I mean, we've got half our members are men and half are women, and they all want relationships. They all come in and go through the arduous process of sitting in front of you know the likes of me and give, filling out a profile. They want a relationship. They just don't admit it to their lad friends or mm, or maybe yeah. to their girlfriends because they want to be all laddish and uh, I want sex. Yeah. But that's you know <laughs> it's, it's total lies. Yeah. They want but, a relationship. But do you think something like Valentine's Day puts the pressure on relationships and puts the pressure on men in particular, and they kind of run for the hills in fright? Yeah, a lot of the time. Um, I think it, it does and it doesn't. I mean, for new relationships um, that may be focused around the wrong things, possibly material things, that kind of thing, and you know where everyone's going out to the posh restaurant because they don't want their girlfriend to be upset with them and you know they're eating off very slimmed down menus with only three choices for dessert mm -hmm. three choices for main three choices for a starter it's you know which is just a waste of money you know that's when valentine's is is too commercialized and puts the pressure on the guys but for genuine relationships where there is a real love and a real appreciation for each other and a knowledge of each other's uh, what they what people want what their partner wants i think then it's genuinely it can be a very very nice occasion for people to kind of do something that other than the norm and treat their partner yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what what tips now would you have for the single ladies and gents out there who may be feeling a little bit down today and going god everybody's in love and i'm not yeah. well you know if you've made no, the no, decision no. <laughs> 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 what a good impersonation <laughs> i know i'm down to the er <laughs> i'm in love with myself and many other people <laughs> yes <laughs> well look if you've made the decision that you don't want to be on your own this time next year for valentine's day then do something in between be proactive you know there's many different avenues for finding the perfect partner you can get on to all your friends and say have a think do you have any nice guys or girls for me in your life in work in your uh, your partner's friends and then badger them into organizing that badger. introduction <laughs> because the problem is you know and you know what happens to all of us when we're single your friend will go oh, i've got the perfect guy for you he's the guy in work and then nothing materializes and you're going what about that guy you know why are you not organizing that date remind them give and them a little bit of a show meet i always thought that a lot of couples meet in work in some yeah, strand of work maybe yeah. not sitting beside each other yeah yeah, yeah. like you were <laughs> but, you know because I, mean, I met my husband in work so yeah. is, is that a good area to talk Hang to on, friends weren't about weren't you modeling yeah. as a bride and groom together or something wasn't that what happened to you two? i modeled with any number of men's grooms through modeling and no we met we actually we had to recreate an ad together which was really embarrassing because he takes trousers off <gasps> okay, <laughs> I'm suddenly interested in this conversation. <laughs> God. And what happened then? <laughs> no, it was the, the <laughs> Levi's ad. Do you remember mm. the first yeah, 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 Levi's yeah. ad? Yeah. Where they take the trousers off and the laundry dress and it came in one. Yes. Yeah. So I was the girl who takes the trousers off and puts them in the washing machine. I'm still doing it. 21 years later. <laughs> <laughs> very good. That Going through his pockets now, very though. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't get away with much now, no. Annie. But, but, the, but the, 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 I suppose a lot of people, it's like you go to the pub, you go to a club, you go, that's not the right way to meet someone well, if you want a relationship. Really. Well, I mean, you know, you can come to introductions agencies like ours and go the, the very direct route about it, or you can go online. But I mean, online dating does work for some people, it doesn't for others. If you're going online dating, be honest about yourself. If you're not honest about yourself, then you're not you're starting off a relationship on the wrong footing. You know, people will often women will get on and lie about their age, men will get on and lie about their height. And <laughs> Is if that's the main thing they lie about. Yeah. Wow. And you know, if you go and meet someone, you know 
and they're three inches shorter than they said they were, you're just going to be thinking, why did you lie about your height? You're not going to say, oh, well, I love you. You know, you were right to lie about your height because otherwise I wouldn't have seen you. You don't think that way. Mm -hmm. And guys equally don't think, and oh, well, it doesn't matter that. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, and putting yeah. up old no, pictures. And, you know, yeah. Like that I mean, new show, Catfish. Yeah. Have mm. you seen that show yeah. when no. people yeah. actually... Meet people they're falling in love with online. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of scary. And over like eight, ten years, and then they finally get them together, these yeah. two bro brothers, I think they are. And they're completely different, different to what they said they yeah. were. Oh, wow. Even putting up pictures of other people that they'd never met before mm. to say that was them. And then they meet them and they com look completely well, different. Well, that living vicariously through mm. online uh, dating sites that is in existence in Ireland mm. as well. I mean, you know, I've got friends that have developed these relationships, these email relationships with guys. Now, I'm not saying that girls don't do it as well, but just in my friend's experience. And they've gone to kind of try and organize a date and the guys just won't meet them and it eventually mm. transpires that they're married. Now, they're not no. intending to cheat, but they just want this vicarious yeah. relationship. They want this vicarious relationship. relationship. The actual commitment Correct. Of and they, they also want to know that they've got options. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always nice for everybody, all of us to, to know that we've got options, but if you're in a committed relationship, you shouldn't be behaving that way. Yeah. Mm. No. So, I mean, that's, you know, online dating, but I haven't said that online dating does work for yeah. some people. And then you mentioned pubs and clubs. If you go out to a pub or a club, you can meet someone. I mean, chances are people that are out on a Saturday night and they're all dolled up and they're in the mood to meet somebody. But the problem is, if you go out on a Saturday night and you stand yourself in the corner and look all demure and beautiful for the night, no guy's going to approach you. So you're pr far better off going out and being friendly, smiling. You know, if you engage with people, if you, f if you find a guy that you fancy, give him eye contact, give him the green light and be ob obvious about it. You don't have to rock up and ask him if he wants a drink. But then equally the advice to guys would be, if a girl is staring at you all night, that's the green light, for the love of God, act on it. <laughs> Go up life. and just say, would you like a drink? <laughs> don't stare at a girl all night and then lights up and then you, you waddle off home having not made any effort. Or Go else you and drink too effort. much to get your Dutch courage going. Correct. Mm. And then it's sideways yeah. <laughs> over to the girl. <laughs> The no 10 to 2 that. scenarios, my brothers used to yeah. call it, yeah. like 10 to 2, whoops, Daisy, where is she gone? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know, was that when the dating scene, it's a bit of a nightmare out there now because they say that it's getting worse and worse and it's more vicious because you've, you've got, I know, men say women just want money and women say men just want good looks and all the fakeness of, uh, and the falseness. I think that's I think going though. Yeah. I think with the Celtic Tiger mm. that's kind of disappeared out the door because I think a lot of people who, and I certainly I know an awful lot of people who married for the, you know, the, the, f the fringe benefits of the money. Um, didn't survive that period. Yeah, you know, no and yeah. clearly now. I mean, yeah. all the women mm. that come in to us are very self-sufficient mm. and mm. extremely successful and have their own money, and money's not an issue. And it can be kind of a bit of a switch. A lot of the women that are coming in and saying, I don't want a gold digger, mm. they're saying they don't want a clinger on. Yeah. Versus the other way around. Do men find that intimidating though if a woman is successful, if she's uh, stands on her own two feet, she's not needy, she's not very, very girly or whatever? Do, do men find that off putting sometimes? Modern men, uh, to a degree, not really, unless it's the, the imbalance is extreme. Yeah. Um, but traditional men would probably find it a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. Mm. Um, they f they'd feel emasculated, like they should be the hunter gatherer. I mean, it's yeah. in our genetics. Um, men feel like they should be the ones to provide. Yeah. Mm. So, to a degree, it can cause a, a bit of a problem. The more confident the man, though, the less mm. of an issue. Yeah, because I remember once I bought. Okay, it was a bit of an extravagant gift, a big, massive weekend away, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> gone. Yeah, it's like oh, I'm supposed he's thinking, to be doing how, that. How am I going to outdo that? Yeah, he's thinking, you know, or if you bring, you know, two houses to the relationship and he has no house, yeah. he's thinking, oh my, God, I should have houses and yeah. I should be the one that's providing for her. And yeah. it can be the death of some relationships. Really? If you're talking about a guy that's uncom particularly unconfident or, or whatever, oh God, mm. that's a bit daunting. In light of that, though, yeah. if if that is where women are coming from now. And we have civil marriages, and yeah. uh, you know, maybe people are slightly mm. older don't want to do the whole church thing. Mm. Are there prenups now? Prenups, as far no. as I know, are not legally binding in this country. They're not. No. Okay. You can put whatever you mm. like down on, a pa on paper mm. between solicitors, but when it comes down to it, the law, the, the overall law will, mm. will right. prevail. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, we'll take a break now. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, I'd just like to say that for my partner this morning, I went out and I picked two little snowdrops, put them into a little shot glass, made pancakes, a cup of tea, and gave it to him in bed. He's after walking in with a big bunch of roses for me. You should see the, the roses and the snowdrops together. And now we've no milk for our tea. We're drinking black tea and black coffee.
I'm 49 years married today uh, in August. Uh, my husband got me a car this morning and I got him one. And we, we both love each other as much as ever. Lovely. Now we've um, a lot of. Uh, sorry, I got taken away by the romance, but <laughs> here and we do have quite a lot of romantic viewers as well. Uh, this text: I just received a del del delivery of a dozen red roses, eleven real and one fake. The card with it read, "I will love you till the last rose dies." The last oh, rose yeah. will never die. That's so romantic. Oh, oh yeah. that's lovely. Yeah. Um, my poor man has not got a hope of romance tonight. I stopped smoking yesterday and I'm bad for him. <laughs> Sorry, that's from <laughs> that's Pat. For <laughs> Rose in Limerick says, I got the flu for Valentine's. Lucky me, but as I'm single, maybe I should be grateful I got something. That's from oh, Rose oh. in Limerick. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to you and my partner Tommy. I can't wait to head out for dinner later and a break away from everyday motherhood. Hi girls, myself and my partner gave each other homemade vouchers this year. We had things like a lion, cooking the dinner, taking the kids out to give each other a break and it's the best present ever to get and it's free. There's an idea. Um, uh, girls, you're looking lovely and hope you have a great Valentine's Day. I always buy a teddy and chocolate love heart cake in the cinema. Chinese restaurant, nice simple thoughts count. That's Stephen Corey. That's not very simple. That's quite a bit of an effort, yeah. I think. Um, if you had to wait until February 14th to tell your partner to love you love them, you're a very sad person. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Some advice is needed from you, Rena. <clears throat> Girls, I've liked this guy for five years. We're very close friends. Valentine's Day is just a reminder of what could never be. Now, what do you do if you're in that situation? If you've been mad about someone for ages mm. and you're just afraid to get it out there in case you ruin the friendship? Um, look for some signs and possibly engage the the opinion of one of your mutual friends to see if there might be something going on yeah. and see the danger with something like this is if there is genuinely nothing going on and it is the feeling is just on one side you are going to lose that friendship if you do something about it however I'd always be one for taking a chance and for going five years enough's enough yeah do something say yeah. something um, Oh God, I don't know the people involved. I'd love to be able to kind of say to them, oh, do you usually go to a rugby match? Do you usually go to a rugby match? Maybe try and, you know, hold their hand or get them drunk. Get off them. Or, <laughs> well, yeah, that's the traditional. Um, that's how people usually meet, especially when they meet in work. They wait for that one big night out and they have a blowout and they have, ugh. Um, so you could try that, but I would be one for taking a chance. If there is no mutual friend to ask their opinion, take the plunge. 